And tonight, Paul O'Mahony is going to give us a speech called Love and Lust. So please welcome Paul O'Mahony. Was that love or was that lust? It was a hard job to come up with that, with an answer to that. And you will all have to make up your own mind. Toastmasters, Madam Toastmaster and guest. Love and lust in opera. That's what this is all about. Opera is a type of theatre in which most or all of the characters sing most or all of the time. In that very obvious sense, it is not realistic and has, through most of its 400-year history, often been thought exotic and strange. Why on earth do people still love it? Why on earth do people spend good money? Why on earth do people spend their whole life practicing to perform it? And why is it the one form of classical music that is growing new audiences? Love or lust? I grew up in a house that had opera in it. Two LPs. Madam Butterfly. And another one that has just gone out of my head. <laughs> Two operas, six LPs, bits of plastic, all held in a radiogram. Turntable on the top, take them out, put them in, pull the arm over, and watch them drop. Never happened once in my house. I had no interest in opera. My father had no interest in opera. My mother had no interest in opera. But unfortunately for me, my mother had a brother who was a trained opera singer. And his favorite piece of party piece was Anis Angelicus. Anis and, and God did it. Blooming well embarrassed me. I cringed. There I was in short trousers, down behind the sofa like this. It was crazy music, right? Subjecting children to that? Absolutely the pits. So I went, came out of school, I go to Dublin, and one day I'm walking down that street that runs off Grafton Street, where the Gaiety is. Some of you will have been in the Gaiety. I looked at the boards on the side, Dublin Grand Opera Society, Samson and Delilah. Now, okay, there's bound to be somebody in the room who doesn't know who Samson was. He was a great, big, strong man, leader of his people, the most upright, saintly man that could have existed. Delilah was a prostitute. And a really powerful prostitute. And I thought, well, look, I didn't fully know that she was a prostitute, to be totally honest. But I paid my money and I went in in order to see what on earth was it that I detested so much. You might as well go once in your life. Well, Toastmasters, I sat in the gods, right up at the very top. I didn't have glasses. I thought, well, this is over in two hours. No sweat, no problem. You had the usual stuff, an overture, and it went along. And oh, guys, women, all of you, the woman playing Delila, she was drop dead gorgeous. And she was dropping out of her clothes. <laughs> As she went and bent over Samson, 
with her breasts falling over the back of his shoulder as she massaged him and as she gradually removed more and more pieces of drama I got turned on <laughs> turned on to opera <laughs> you know what got me on to opera was it love or was it lust Was it sex or was it sex? The most erotic thing. Now remember, this was 1975. There was no sex in Ireland, no contraception, no divorce. Things happened through mysteries, right? It wasn't, you did not usually go to see something on a stage in the center of Dublin, which wasn't out on the fringe, with a woman practically bare. And the man, I mean, I just thought, what man wouldn't love to be seduced? What man wouldn't love to resist and resist? And, uh, and Dalila does that in that opera. And I came out of the theater and I needed a glass of water. I was absolutely, I mean, frankly, I said to myself, if opera, totally unknown to me, is about love and lust and about seduction and about women finding out where men's powers are. I thought, wow, to discover that men of this great man's power was in his hair. <coughs> Ted. In his hair. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> to discover that. You know, this, if opera is all about, I thought to myself, all about the quest to find where man's power is. <coughs> I'm signing up for that. So that's what happened. That incidentally going to see what it was that I couldn't stand. Not really fully understanding how powerful the lust was. Thinking that opera is all ethereal and love and... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. Oh, it was much stronger stuff. So I then discovered it's not just highfalutin stuff. It's not just thrills. Almost every opera I discovered is about love and lust. <coughs> Sometimes the people involved die. That's the same as a love affair ending, isn't it? So, I tell you something. I did it because I wanted to go to see something that I really didn't like. I wanted my preconceptions confirmed. I discovered that while my preconceptions were being totally thrown, I was hooked by love and lust. If you are vulnerable to love and lust, go to an opera. Thank you very much. <laughs>